You would not believe what just happened. <laughs> you probably would believe just what just happened. <laughs> I thought we were live for the last 10 minutes. I uh, thought we were live. We were doing the show. We were doing the show. Totally normal. For ourselves. Nailing having it, Having a by great the way. time. Absolutely And I looked it. down at the chat room and I read somebody's comment going, is anybody else's screen still say waiting? And I looked at Ethan <sighs> and you just went, Oh, my God, we're not live. <laughs> Had Kim not mentioned it, we would have gone the full hour wondering why no one was interacting with what we were saying. That would have been amazing. Are we live for now? For nobody. We are live now. <laughs> um, but we do want to confirm that. So if you wouldn't mind jumping into the chat room, just letting us know if we are, in fact, live, that would be great. Because apparently I can't even confirm that. Uh... Welcome, everyone, to Ginger Runner Live, episode number 306. Today, uh, we're going to celebrate a race that did not happen this last weekend, but the community came and represented. Uh, we're going to celebrate Tiger Claw and Tiger Claw Day. We're going to give away a bunch of prizes to those who participated. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, what it was like being a race director and and sort of making things work, making lemonade out of a bunch of lemons. It should be a fun show. Do you forgive me? I do, but this is hilarious. <laughs> I'll for pull us, it together for the show. For us, our audience is like, what the hell? Dude, it's four. <laughs> Where, where are you guys? Uh, we were here doing that the show. That was really funny. Man, Gus loved the show. Yeah. You missed some of the best <laughs> stuff. Um, regardless, welcome everyone to Ginger Runner Live 306. Sit back, relax. Here we go. Ginger Runner. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> that is a first. In the history of Ginger Runner Live. Oh, boy. I am actually surprised it I took 306 like, episodes to do. I am almost crying because we were like full show mode. Yeah. Doing it up. Where we are right now in the show, we were beyond this. We Way were well beyond. into like <laughs> talking about Patreon. We appreciate the people who participated. And we thought, uh, sorry, I'm not going to say we. Well, I will say we because we both thought that. But it's my fault. We thought we were live. We just did about 10 or 15 minutes of show. We had a great time. Had a great time. And Kim's like, uh, are we live? And I looked at the go live button and went, <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. We've been doing the show to our dog uh, who's asleep. And <laughs> He won all the prizes, you guys. <laughs> he doesn't even care. Um, regardless, it was really funny for us. Probably really uh, frustrating to our live viewers. We're, we're like, sorry. What the hell, what, where, where the hell's the show? <laughs> um Regardless, everyone, we appreciate you taking some time out of your busy Mondays to spend a little bit of it with us. Welcome to Ginger Runner Live episode number 306. Take two for us. Take one for you. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Today, we're going to uh, look. I'm already off. Boom. Hey. Uh, today, we're going to talk about something that occurred this weekend. Uh, Tiger Claw was supposed to happen this last weekend. For those who don't know, Tiger Claw is our annual trail race that we host here in the Pacific Northwest in Issaquah, Washington. This would have been the second, so I'm not... Talking like, this is 10 years of doing this race. This would have been our second so year. It was meant to be annual. It was meant to be yep. annual. Um, but last year was our first running of it. It was unbelievable. It was amazing. Uh, we've been race directing uh, virtual races now for five years. And this was our first like in-person event. And we were mm -hmm. just so blown away by the support last year. This year, bringing it back, the race sold out in three hours. We were, we've were we been working for months to create a better version of Tiger Claw than what we put on last year. Amazing swag. Crazy, awesome sponsors. Um, we and like people just signing up to volunteer left and right. It volunteers was set through the roof, to like be just amazing. Really, really good. So for the last few months, for obvious reasons, we've had to postpone Tiger Claw. Um, but for the last few months, we've we were prepping to work really hard, and we got everything organized, and it was going to go off without a hitch. Uh, obviously, with everything that's going on in the world, we um, chose to postpone really early in the process, which thankfully we did. Um, at this point, we're still working with government agencies to even figure out if it can take place in this this year, if we have to uh, move it again to next year. Uh, but we're going to do our due diligence to make sure that the event is, without a doubt, the best Tiger Claw yet. Um, but regardless, we came to May 2nd, which was this last Saturday, which was to be the second annual Tiger Claw. And with all the work that we put in and the Tiger uh, Claw team has put into it, it's been a really rough couple of weeks sort of leading up to the event because we kept thinking every day we should be doing this. We should be doing this right now. We should be, yeah. you know, getting stuff together and and emptying out the garage and preparing the gear and doing all that. Uh, but we decided to sort of make lemonade out of lemons. 
Uh, so what took place this last weekend was not not a virtual race, but it was a community based um, celebration. challenge celebration of what was to be the Tiger Claw race. It was Tiger Claw Day. I, um, brought, I have tiger colored beer. Today. We both do. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to talk all about that today. We're going to give away a bunch of prizes. We're going to share stories that occurred this last weekend. It's going to be a positive, uplifting recap of what occurred this last weekend because Kim and I were blown away. We expected, hey, this should be fun, and it turned into so much more. So we're going to talk about that on today's show. Uh, I am your host, Ethan. This is Kim. <laughs> Hi, Ethan. How are you doing today? Great. We did. This is now our second show. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if, uh, <laughs> we'll pull it together. I promise. Uh, welcome, Don't promise that. We welcome to that. the show. If you're new here, an extra big welcome to you. Uh, I just saw somebody was watching, uh, in Ireland, 12, hey. 15 AM here in Ireland says quest for truth. So welcome. If you are new to the show, uh, we are live now. Yeah. Um, so if you have questions or comments regarding Tiger Claw Day, you can feel free to pop them in the chat room. I'll be in there um, throughout the show. Yeah. So we have a lot of stories that we're going to share. And before we do that, though, we we have some individuals that we like to thank. Um, first, we're pretty excited about this. They're back. Sufferfest has uh, decided to jump on board as our sponsor for Ginger Runner Live for the next few weeks. They are good friends of ours. They're an amazing beer company. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Drink that first. Uh, it is a female-founded brewery. They've been making just delicious beers for years now. We were friends with them. Like At the very beginning, we would go trail running with them and stuff. It was pretty amazing um, to see how far they've come, too. Yes. But Sufferfest uh, is going to be sponsoring the next six episodes of Ginger Runner Live. We're very thankful to them for allowing this to happen. So the podcast is going to be uploaded on a regular schedule. It's going to be great. Uh, and we're very appreciative of them. We've been drinking their beer now for a number of years. We uh, They're just a great company. And they're doing some cool initiatives this month. I'll very briefly mention they have new beer flavors coming out, including an IPA, which we're going to be drinking on this show in the coming weeks. I'm very excited about it. Maybe even next week. Maybe even next week. Uh, but they're also doing some uh, really cool work with Strava right now. So they're going to challenge you for a number of days to kind of create workouts every single day, I believe for 16 days or so, or at least through the 16th. Today, day one. Today, today, is, today is day one. Day one. Today yeah. is day one of the Strava Sufferfest challenge. So you can go to Strava uh, through the app or the website and you can sort of join that um uh challenge if you would like to partake in that um so that's a lot of fun we encourage you to do that uh, we also would like to thank our patreon subscribers those who support us on patreon at all levels they are the reason that the show is able to happen week after week we've been doing a new thing now where we're doing live shows every single day for our three dollars and above patreon level uh and it has been amazing absolutely amazing both um for Kim and myself and for the community, it's been kind of this like daily therapy, daily routine. Every morning at 11 a.m. we go live with our crew and every weekend we go live at 4 p.m. with a beer and our crew. And it's been pretty great. So, yeah, if you'd like to join us over on Patreon, it's easy to do. <clears throat> Patreon.com slash the ginger runner. And uh, mm-hmm. a big shout out to our top two top tier two individuals, uh, Chris Lee out of Hong Kong and Brian Sands out of Iowa. They're both just amazing humans, and we thank them both very much from the bottom of our hearts for being so supportive, especially through all this that's going on, because uh, we uh, were fearful for quite some time, but because of just amazing support on Patreon, we're we're keeping the lights on and the mics hot. So big shout out to them. Um, let's get into it. What do you think? Let's do it. Um, just really quick, Melissa in the chat room says, just join the Sufferfest Challenge. Cool. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, I believe that's what it's called, the Sufferfest Challenge over on Strava. Um, we'll be joining it as well. Uh, and we'll also be just drinking a ton of Sufferfest beer. And it's been pretty cool. People who listen to the show, watch the show, um, they'll be buying Sufferfest beer and taking pictures and sending them to us. And it's kind of neat. It's neat to see that. And I know Sufferfest <laughs> likes it. And it's like, hey, maybe they can sponsor more shows. It'd be great. Let's get into this. So. As we mentioned, Tiger Claw was not able to take place this last weekend, but we challenged our runners to what we called Tiger Claw Day. We came up with a really creative name for We're it. We're so creative. We're so creative. Um, yeah, the point of the day was not to turn our race into a virtual race, but more of, uh, hey, we all know what we were supposed to be doing today. Yeah. That's not happening. Yeah. How can we do a positive spin on this? We do a virtual race every year called GRGR, which is a Ginger Runner Global Run. We have some announcements about that that we'll probably cover at the end of this show. Uh, we are moving it up, and it's going to be really amazing. Um, some really wonderful things going on with that this year. So yep. Tiger Claw, we wanted to just kind of be its own thing. 
allow the runners who are going to participate to do something this weekend, get creative with it, get inspired by what Tiger Claw does on a, a like what we did last year with our, you know, our arch has a lot of meaning. Uh, we have French fries at the finish. We do uh, Elevation Culture wooden keepsakes. We do all these things that are kind of specific and fun for Tiger Claw that we kind of challenged our runners to let's have some fun with it. What can you create by staying, you know, staying safe, staying close to home, following all the guidelines, all that stuff. But what can you do? And we, you know, dangled the carrot mm-hmm. of some pretty awesome prizes. Sufferfest is going to be giving away. Um, Sufferfest was our premier sponsor for Tiger Claw this year as well. And yeah, I mean, we just give a shout out to our sponsors sure. right off the bat. Um, Sufferfest, as Sufferfest. Ethan just mentioned, was going to be our premier sponsor again because mm-hmm. they came on board last year with us as well. Yep. Um, we had uh, Rabbit. Rabbit. Uh, which doing all the race shirts for Tiger Claw. Yep. Uh, I'm wearing a rabbit shirt right now. This is just one of their new ones. It's really great. I just got we just got these shirts and I literally I wore mine yesterday on a run and a bike ride and I just went to pull it out of the laundry because I was like, I really want to wear it. And it was, it was a little damp. Not good. <laughs> uh, Spring Energy. Spring Energy has been our nutrition sponsor for Tiger Claw. They stepped up too, and uh, we're going to be giving away two $50 gift certificates to Spring Energy. Uh, we're also doing two $50 gift certificates to Rabbit. Um, and Sufferfest is going to be doing two Yeti coolers, hard shell Yeti coolers. I believe it's the the 20, uh, 20 gallon or whatever the Yeti 20 is. Uh, plus, I'm jealous of it. Sufferfest because, swag. Oh, um. mm-hmm. And finally, <laughs> Seven Hills running shop here in Seattle, Washington. They were going to be one of the loop sponsors as well for Tiger Club, but we're doing two $50 gift certificates to Seven Hills Running Shop, which will help support Phil, uh, a small brick and mortar running shop here in the Seattle area that caters to trail runners. Uh, So that'll be really great. So we're going to give away eight prizes tonight to eight pretty much randomly, but creative participants in this last weekend's Tiger Claw Day. We're we're also going to share a, a number of stories from participants we asked some of them to, to share some of their stories from the weekend and kind of what they got up to and how they challenged themselves. So we're going to start with just sharing some awesome stories. And then the last eight stories that we're going to share are going to be from individuals who uh, won a prize. And that's mm. always good. What's going on in the chat? How are people doing? <laughs> are they able to see and hear us now? No, we need to start uh, all over again. All over uh, again. What's really cool is, um, so we had... The viewer from Ireland. We also have somebody from the Philippines and somebody from Singapore joining us today. Mm. I just think it's really cool. I love hearing where you are all from. Um, I just think it's really neat. And it kind of encapsulates uh, GRGR for us. Yeah. Um, But even Tiger Claw because we had participants from several different states and provinces, but also uh, different countries as well. Yeah, it's always really neat. So welcome. Um, We hope you are enjoying the show, no matter what time zone you might be in. Yeah, and feel free to introduce yourself (laughs) and let us know where you're watching from as well. So the premise with Tiger Claw, the race that we created, is as much vert in as few miles as possible. It also wanted to showcase this incredible mountain, Tiger Mountain, that's in our backyard. Uh, Locals use it all the time for training for big races. Uh, Some of the best, best ultra runners on record, have used it as their training uh, training ground. Chrissy Mayle, uh, Scott Jurek, Brian Morrison, mm-hmm. all these stout runners use Tiger Claw or Tiger Mountain. Yeah. So we wanted to showcase some of our favorite trails on the mountain and make it kind of a cool, unique thing or to choose your own adventure, blah, blah, blah. People took some of these facets of our race and used it as inspiration to create their own sort of Tiger Claw things for Tiger Claw Day. The first story comes to us from Eugene Day, who's also been a longtime supporter of the show. Eugene was, uh, he ran our inaugural inaugural race. There's a fantastic photo of him at the finish yes. that's on the Tiger Claw Instagram. He just posted it this weekend, right? Yep. Um, and I he, love that photo. That's one of my favorite photos from the race. Mine too. Eugene is just a real stand-up dude and super stout runner too. And you'll see here with what he got up to. Uh, Eugene says, I have been injured undiagnosed calf and heel pain and have been unable to run more than a couple of miles at a time for several months. I would probably not have been able to train for Tiger Claw if the pandemic hadn't happened. But even though I've only run 5k or less for months, I decided to do loops of my block in Wallingford until I just couldn't do it anymore. I had visions of completing 25 miles, but I didn't have that in me. I made it 14 miles and 1200 plus feet of gain, which isn't too shabby considering I had no support and I was totally out of shape. But I have high hopes for getting back at it. I'll show you his uh, his uh, link there. He goes, <laughs> I have high hopes for getting back at it. A day later, I feel pretty good. I'm coming for the mountain whenever we can run it. 
Yes. And there's uh, Eugene's stats for the day. I just love, um, he also has some great videos on his Twitter account that you can you can go check yep. out. We you know posted them on And Eugene's Instagram, in the so. chat room right now as well. Uh, big shout out to Eugene just because he did tons of vert. And like some of his Twitter videos are great because it showcases just how steep Se- Seattle has some hills. We mentioned this on the Daily Brew, but we'll mention it again, actually. And Eugene, your, your GPS track looks a lot like a mesh of mine and Ethan's from Tiger Claw Day because we stayed within our neighborhood as yeah. well and just kind of hit the little punchy hills. Yep. And there are... Seattle is full of the little pitchy yeah. hills. So if you don't live near parks and you don't <laughs> live near trails, you live near vert. That's mm-hmm. kind of the guarantee here in Seattle. So uh, Kim and I also got up to some craziness. Kim did 30 loops of our neighborhood. I did 100 hill repeats. Yeah. Uh, so I ended up getting like three, 3,500 feet of gain and 11 miles or something. You ended up getting like 1,700 feet of gain or something. Not quite that much, but I got over well over thou. Yeah. Yeah. It was really good. It was fun. The next story comes to us from Mike Acer and just the photo. And Mike ran Tiger Claw last year. He did. He, he's he got his Tiger Claw shirt there in the background. But a stupid runner brain thought it would be good to run the new Tiger Claw distance of 25 miles while trying for as much vert as achievable. Tiger Claw was to be the race that got my legs in shape for my first Western States with its amazing climbs, loads of vert, and quad thrashing descents. I had such a great time at the first Tiger Claw that I was excited to be going back. We all know the story. Tiger Claw, Western States, and every other race fell to the COVID-19 pandemic. Many parks were closed to running and hiking. My right hip and knee had not fully recovered from a fall in mid-February and were getting more ownery. Mid-April, I decided to take two weeks off from running to give them some time to recover. Tiger Claw Day started at 5 a.m. with a killer cramp in my right calf that bolted me out of bed. It took two hours to be able to walk on the leg without limping. Serendip serendipitously I, a favorite local park with loads of hilly trails was reopening that morning that was exciting news uh and helped distract me from my leg so of course stupid runner brain srb <laughs> thought it would be good to run 25 miles with as much fruit as possible in honor of tiger claw it was slow going due to the calf the day was beautiful i was enjoying back uh, being back running in the park and things were going to be okay early on Then some biomechanical imbalances started to arise. Eventually, my calf, knee, and hamstring were able to shut off SRB and take control. Though I didn't reach the goal of 25 miles, I did get in almost 18 miles with 3,800 feet of vert. You can see that hill behind them there in the photo. Nice. Uh, To honor Tiger Claw Day. While I reminisced about the race and looked longingly to the next one, thanks for the inspiration to make this day fun and have a blast running up and down some of my favorite trails. Happy Tiger Claw Day. Nice job, Mike. Um, I look at that photo and I'll show it again here. I can't help but think rat jaw. Like it has that sort of Tennessee, just rough, sort of nasty terrain in it. So uh, great job, Mike. Way to get that done and way to get as many uh, repeats as your body would allow. Stupid runner brain. (laughs) Next story comes to us. Oh, let me just pull up the right media. Boop, boop, boop. All right. This next one comes to us from Danny Ogden. My initial goal for Tiger Claw Day was to match the distance and vert of the race. So this was kind of a common theme, which surprised us. Uh, We didn't know how much participation we would get with Tiger Claw Day. A majority of the runners, and again, you can go to the uh, Run Tiger Claw Instagram account and just sort through. We did like a highlight story highlight. There's like dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of people who did uh, big days, big days of vert or miles. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of people attempted to recreate the distance and the gain of Tiger Claw, which is difficult to do. Or even like a micro version of that, which is also difficult to do. It's just difficult to do. Yeah. Uh, Because not many trails allow you to get that much vert in as little mileage. Um, Anyways, so back to Danny. Uh, My initial goal of Tiger Claw Day was to match the distance and vert of the race. Unfortunately, all of my go-to trails in Los Angeles for vert are closed at the moment. Mm -hmm. Was hoping to do Mount Wilson times two, which I've done. And that's dumb. It is so much. It is so much climbing and heat. Uh, God, okay. It's always hot. Yeah. So I decided to keep it local and do four by six mile loops near Porter Ranch. I set up an aid station in the back of my car where I'd refuel at the end of each loop before taking off for another six miles. At the end of the uh, at the end of my last loop, I threw in a couple extra miles to make it a marathon official PR as well. But I was six thousand three hundred and sixty one feet short of Tiger Claw's elevation gain. All in all, a super fun day. Thanks, Ethan and Kim and Tiger Claw crew. Can't wait for the real race. Uh, and here is Danny, probably mid mid loop, 
uh, at his park, just chugging some probably ice cold water. It looks hot, but I can smell the smell of Southern California just looking uh, at that photo. Totally. <laughs> um, Danny tagged some of us uh, in his <clears throat> photos from this weekend, and every photo I went, that's got to be Southern California. Like, I, re I recognize the way it looks, the colors, and everything. Um, so way to go, Danny. Way to get it done out there. Our next, uh, what's going on in the chat? I'll, t I'll do that first. Uh, yeah, there's just a question from Chuck Hall in the chat room. Chuck asked, if Tiger Claw is pushed in next year, will you freeze current entrance? So if Tiger Claw does get pushed to next year, all of our current rent entrants who have chosen the postponement option will get rolled over to next year. Yep, they automatically are deferred yep. over to next year's running. Um, but we're working on some creative. other possibilities for next year as well. So if if we do get pushed to 2021, um, we're not automatically a jam-packed sold-out race. Basically, our goal for 2021 is to not make it so anyone who wants to run Tiger Claw has to wait till 2022. So we're going to do some yeah, fun we'll things. Something. Yeah, we're going to figure something out if it does get pushed for 2021. But any current registered runner uh, will get pushed to next year if that is uh, what ends up having to happen. And we're in constant communication with the runners, just letting them know full transparency, everything that's going on behind the scenes pretty yeah. much. Uh, Angela in the chat room says, for real, I did every hill on my route three times. Uh, I remember your uh, stories, Angela. It was very muddy and very wet. Somehow the sun came out for us when we decided to yeah. run. Um, but Angela goes on to say, did every hill on my route three times and only came up with 550 feet. It's tough to get, depending on where you are, especially right now with a lot of our mountains in Washington just closed. Mm -hmm. it, it's hard to rack up that those big, big gains. Yeah. Uh, so it's also a testament to Tiger Mountain's sort of stoutness and, and ability to cram so much vert into a shorter shorter distance yeah. like that. Um, all right. So our next entry comes to us from Melissa McNamara. Melissa says, it hit me like a wave. The moment I crossed the finish line at the inaugural Tiger Claw in 2019, I knew I'd be back. Needless to say, the weekend of May 2nd, 2020 was one that I have been looking forward to for 364 days. Yes, mm. I was counting. This year, although I would much rather be challenging myself on Tiger Mountain, I joined in the celebration of Tiger Claw Day locally instead. The night prior, I picked my route and made plans for child care for my son. To keep with the loop and boop theme, that's the first time I've heard that. And I love it. I love it. Loop and boop. It's perfect. We need to make a t-shirt next year. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I selected, uh, Melissa gets one for free. Um uh, I selected a loop-style trail close to my home in Golden, Colorado, Mount Galbraith via Nightbird Gulch. I found myself with the pre-race jitters the night before simply for the excitement of the nature uh, prescription ahead. The next day, with everything prepped in my pack, I began the grind up Nightbird Gulch. The mountain had welcomed me with a thick fog, threatening rain off in the distance. Nightbird, Gul Nightbird Gulch trailhead sits at 5,965 feet and climbs to a bonus out and back to Cedar Gulch. Let me, I missed that sentence, sorry. Uh, Nightbird Gulch Trailhead sits at 5,965 feet and climbs to intersect Mount Galbraith Loop. As the fog faded, I would complete three clockwise loops up to 7,224 feet with one bonus out and back to Cedar Gulch. Overt, how I've missed you. I passed a few hikers along the loops who quickly became my fan base, cheering me on with each circuit. The effort felt freeing and lighthearted like I could have ran all of the miles. With a timeline of my toddler's nap time fast approaching, I completed my final loop and returned down Nightbird Gulch for my final boop. It was an awesome way to spend the morning and much needed trail therapy. Thanks to the GR crew for the motivation to get out and challenge myself in the spirit of such a fun day. Unbelievable. So yeah, she managed 10.16 uh, miles, 24, that's 2,500 feet. Yeah. Let's just assume that. Uh, mm. pretty dang stout. Well done, Melissa. Nice job. And at elevation too. <clears throat> it's uh stout. I had to go I, high for it. I don't it. think I've ever heard you go that high. I, I could probably go higher. I'm not gonna try. <laughs> but who knows? We'll save that for the post show. Well, that, yeah, I'll go higher for the post show. Um, our next story from Tiger Claw Day comes to us from Ingen. Ingen, uh, longtime supporter. She ran it the inaugural year as well. She's gonna come back this year. Um, Ingen says, I don't have a very interesting or creative story, but I wanted to say thanks. It was a hard week mentally, and even I, the world's most introverted introvert, am struggling with feeling cut off from life. But Tiger Claw Day motivated me to run my longest distance since June of last year, venturing out of my neighborhood for the first time since the lockdown. 
I ran from my house to our town's watershed preserve and had a blast running real long trails again. I took lots of breaks to check and interact with the hashtag Tiger Claw Day. And for a couple hours, I felt like I was part of a community again. I did plan to do three three hill repeats with my kids in costume afterwards, but it was raining so hard by the time I finished that there was uh, a mutiny among the littles. And here is a picture of Ingen just crushing the trail. And again, this is a testament to the Pacific Northwest trails right now. Just lush and green. Yeah. This is what Tiger Claw <laughs> would have been. We haven't been out there because obviously those trails are closed. I can't wait to see those trails again. Seriously. So green. <clears throat> uh, someday. What's going on in the chat? Uh, Borealis in the chat room says, being race organizers, do you have rules of distance or wash stuff from your government yet? I see pictures of race starts and everybody is side by side jam packed. I'm scared that races won't ever be the same yet. Same. So I think you're just asking if we have guidelines set out from our government as far as group events go. Um, there's nothing set out yet because group events in Washington are not allowed. They're, it's going to be a, a long time. I know that there's some things still on this calendar right now, which I can't foresee happening mm -hmm. even with changes. But um, as far as guidelines, I'm sure there'll be something set for group events. Um in the future, but right now, because it's group events are so far off, we just don't have any. I just think that the government's just doing their best to try and deal with how things are progressing. So we are very cautious. Kim and I are the, the we made the call to postpone Tiger Claw very early in the process. We worked very closely with Chuck and at 50K and Chrissy Mail and other local race directors yeah. to determine do our races take place. And we were very, uh, at that time, we were kind of unsure, like, is this the right decision? It's yeah, because so we early. weren't mandated yet to cancel. There were no mandates in, in place. But we did, and we're thankful that we did because obviously things changed. Yeah. Uh, we will not host a race that we do not feel comfortable hosting and feel that the runners wouldn't feel comfortable participating in. And also feel that the community that we're hosting our race in would feel comfortable with. Yep. So. We... Uh, we are confident that when and if Tiger Claw happens this year or if it has to get pushed to next year, it it will be an experience that everyone will want to participate in. And uh, we will never, ever make any of our runners feel uncomfortable or feel uh, that we are not taking care of them 100 percent. Yeah. So and I do, and you know, I think just overall, I think races will look different. I yeah. Think aid stations, aid stations across the board will look very different. I mean, they're they're, you know. We all know where our hands are when we're running ultras and digging into jelly bean pots or whatever. <laughs> you know, like things are going to look, things will be a little different. Things will be sure. different. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Eventually, Chuck says aid station food will change forever. Definitely. Which is not, I mean, which isn't really it's not a, bad a bad thing. thing. It's not a bad thing. Um, a lot of the things that we all have, our, like our team has already talked about dozens of things that we uh, will do. Um, a lot of things we were already doing, a lot of things, it's really easy to just adapt and and sort of do things differently. Also, our race is extremely unique. Our timing system is unique. Everything's very customized. Uh, there's lots of things that we can do that will go beyond what sort of guidelines are going to be in place to yeah. help keep each and every runner safe and all that. Um, these are all things that we're taking into consideration, but also we're working really closely with our permitting agencies. Um uh, we are not making a move until they will allow us to make a move. And at that point, we're going to basically assess whether or not we want to make the move uh, to announce a date and do all that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, we Kim and I trust every day we talk very specifically about things that are going on in our trail space. And we are uh, committed to creating an event that everyone – there is no question that being there and being a part of it is going to be safe for each and every single person. And let's just be honest, like this thing is much bigger than us or our race or 100%. a runner. And, you know, <clears throat> there's, you guys all know, this goes deep. <laughs> uh, so we're going to kind of cut ahead to some of the winners because we want to start giving away some prizes. Um, so many people participated in Tiger Claw Day. It was actually really difficult to narrow down kind of who would win these prizes. And it really came down to creativity. Uh, it wasn't just about physical achievements or who got the most vert or got the most distance like that wasn't even part of the equation it really was who kind of embraced the spirit of tiger claw yeah. uh and over the course of the weekend kim and i would constantly be like oh my god look at this oh yeah you know that sort of thing so there there the create the criteria for winning one of the prizes was simply creativity and participation and 
anyone who participated in hashtag Tiger Claw Day was essentially entered. Um, and yeah, so the prizes we're going to give away are to the people who we are awarding prizes to just kind of went above and beyond. And we're just yeah. really, really stoked to have them uh, a part of the community. And just really quick before we dive into the prizes, um, we have our uh, some of our... What am I trying to say here? Mm -hmm. We can start I the show over. Give it, let's just start the show over. <laughs> press the button. Oh, wait. We weren't live this whole time. Nope. We're just practicing. <laughs> uh, I just want to, I guess what I'm trying to say is um, I see Darren is in the chat room right now. And I want to give Darren and Austin a massive shout out because Tiger Claw last year would not have happened uh, if it weren't for Darren and Austin's yeah. uh, hours and hours and days and weeks and months of help. Uh, in preparation and tear down and all of that. And same as this year, we've had multiple, we had multiple meetings leading up to before the shutdown happened. Mm -hmm. And this year's race, you know, would not happen without their help as well. We've basically so. been working on 2020 Tiger Claw since August 2019, if not earlier than that. I don't yeah. think, I think we started talking about 2020 on May 5th, 2019. Basically, <laughs> uh, Kim was like, dude, don't talk about Tiger Claw for at least a week. And I think by the next day, I was already coming up with ideas. So we've been, you know, planning this forever. And so Darren and Austin have been there that entire time. And have also been, like, helping us throughout dealing with postponement mm -hmm. and our our mini freakouts that we would yep. have. And Tiger Claw Day, um, the re even doing it, is attributed to them. Yes. Austin and Darren sort of came up with the idea of, like, why, rather than, like, be sad. Be sad <laughs> about your race having to be postponed in this day. Why not celebrate the day? And yeah. it was really because of them. So big shout out to them for sure. Thank yes. you for doing that. Yeah. Uh, prizes. Oh boy. Prizes. The first prize is going to come to us from Sufferfest. So Sufferfest, again, a Yeti cooler plus uh, a bunch of Sufferfest swag. Honestly, everyone at Sufferfest has been so supportive. And I, again, I don't want it to sound like a really over the top plug because they're sponsoring this episode, but they Sufferfest is just like, listen, we love what Ginger Runner does. We love Tiger Claw. We love all of it. They really have been super supportive mm -hmm. and it's really neat. It's really neat to be able to interact with humans at a company and it's like real. Because that's also the other scary part about people's races being canceled or postponed. It's like you have sponsors that you want them, you want to foster that relationship and yeah. you want, you 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 know, hoping they'll stick with you to the other side of this. So. Yep. And they've been great. <clears throat> so the winner of the first Yeti Cooler slash Sufferfest swag is Brett Bauer. Congratulations, Brett Bauer. Uh, you did some pretty awesome <laughs> running this weekend. Um, not gonna lie, I'm just like following his Instagram stories all weekend were amazing. He got 8,500 feet in uh, a vert in 33 miles, had this giant like tiger claw plaque thing, very reminiscent of what we put on our starting arch. He yep. had his whole family out there. It almost there. looks the exact same size as like the it, thing. It looks like it's, it's a child size. Yeah. <laughs> but it is also, yeah, exactly the same size as our tiger yeah. medallion on the top yeah. of the arch. Uh, but Brett also ran like through storms and everything that we had going on here. Uh, so way to go, Brett. Um, you can check it out on Brett's Instagram. I think he has some posts up there still of the storms that he ran through. Yeah. And also are, I think on the Tiger Claw. Web, yeah. It's, we have them in our highlights for sure. Um, so Brett goes on to say Tiger Claw Day 2020 was a roaring success. I achieved my goal of accumulating 8,500 feet of vert ascent while running around a 1.1 mile trail loop continuously for 33 miles. Due to COVID-19 and the cancellation of Run Tiger Claw, originally scheduled for May 2nd, the amazing race directors, uh, I don't want to take credit <laughs> for it. I'm not going to read that, but we appreciate that very much because uh, you, you did all the work here. Uh, I set up my own aid station with all of my favorite goodies, hit start on the GPS watch, and got underway at 7.40 a.m. It's about an hour and 40 minutes after the actual start, Brett. We're not going to hold it against you. <laughs> Uh, over the next nine hours and 24 minutes, I trucked along through rain, wind, and the occasional sunbreak. Special thank you to my family who stopped by and cheered me on from a safe distance and my beautiful wife uh, who surprised me with donuts and egg drop soup to keep me fueled. Dang. Egg drop soup would be amazing that in cold weather. That would be amazing. Come on now. This virtual race was one for the record books and will forever hold a special place in my heart forever. Brett. I love that. We're getting you a cooler, my friend. And uh, and some really cool Sufferfest swag. So congratulations. Just stout effort. 33 miles, 8,500 feet of game. Shall we get people to email? The yes. So runner? sorry. Yeah. The other thing is. Um, I guess they may not be watching live either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brett, we're going to try to get in touch with you through your Instagram. But if you are watching or watch this later, uh, email 
info at runtigerclaw.com. Info at runtigerclaw.com. Uh, just say, hey, Brett Bauer here. I won. Uh, we'll get in touch with you. And we'll put you in touch with Sufferfest and we'll get you all your swag and yep. all that good stuff. So if you see this, email. And you that don't. goes for any winners tonight. Any as winners. Well. Any winners tonight. Yeah. Uh, so congratulations, my friend. Let me change the media button. Okay. This one's, I love this one. This is such a great. I love entry. this one too. This one made me smile. So the winner, uh, this next winner will win a $50 gift certificate to Rabbit Apparel. It's really great stuff. Uh, Rabbit, again, one of the sponsors for Tiger Claw. Uh, we just love them. We want to support them as much as possible as well. So this one is Holly Spitzer. Yay. Huge shout out to Holly. She actually created <laughs> her own Tiger Claw. The Tiger Cub. The Tiger Cub 2020. Uh, basically, she did color-coded loops. She did kind of around her local park, just kept it close to home, but still got great vert. Three unique ascents, one common descent, and the, included the green loop as well. Yeah. So Tiger Claw is very unique in that it has a loop-based format. Each loop is different. One common descent, a warm-up loop. She got like, nearly 1,200 feet of gain in eight miles, like... I love she worked it. worked for it. I love it. So congratulations, Holly. Uh, $50 gift certificate to you for Rabbit Apparel. Again, if you are watching or you're here, email info at runtigerclaw.com saying, hey, I'm Holly. What up? Uh, <laughs> I hope awesome. that's what Holly emails you. Right. Hey, I'm Holly. What up? What up? <laughs> I also hope that's what she does. Uh, next up. This one's stout. Stout. Um, the winner. Our next winner. Is this one stout? Stout. Oh, you know what else is stout? Head stout. Head, head start, start stout. <laughs> head, head start stout. What was this last 30, 30 seconds of the show? <laughs> Let me delete that one. Uh, we, we should, should go start live. It again. Yeah, let's go live. Uh, our next winner will win $50 gift certificate to Spring Energy, another one of the Tiger Class sponsors, uh, Andrew Taylor. Andrew Taylor. Stout. Like, Ridiculous. <laughs> 60.41 miles he ran on Saturday. Here's his oh, story. Oh, man. Hey, Kim and Ethan. I've been running for quite a while, but after hearing so much about your content and podcast for some running friends up in Bellingham, including your frequent guest, Maria Dalzon. Hey, Maria. I finally started listening to the GRL podcast and haven't turned back. After running my first 100 miler last year, the one and only Cascade Crest, I decided this year would be less focused on conquering a new distance and more focused on serious training and faster times. I had quite the lineup with Chuckanut, Tiger Claw, Squamish 50 Miler, and The Bear in mm. Idaho to finish off the year. I was biking to work three to four days a week, totaling 27 miles a day, and my running and overall training was on track for my best year yet. COVID obviously caught us all off guard, and I am hardly the biggest victim, but one by one, almost every race was understandably canceled or postponed. I began thinking up solo mountain adventures, which were soon wiped out with the trail closures here in Washington. Then I decided to go for a point-to-point -point speed attempt on the Burke Gilman. Uh, it's a local trail here, only to have all regional trails, the Burke included, closed on me. I kept running, but was feeling less motivated without an upcoming race. A few weeks back, I decided to extend a loop I had already frequented for a little close to home vert. I came up with a 4.7 mile loop with about 715 feet outside my doorstep here on the north end of Lake Washington and decided to do a 12 hour timed run on this route, which I would run from 4 a.m. to 4 p.m., I had not yet heard about Tiger Claw Day, but was fortunately already planning this replacement run when the emails came out. My amazing wife and toddler kept an aid station going and supported me all day. Despite underestimating the impact of dozens of miles on roads versus trails, the day was a great success. I completed about 12 and a half laps, totaling just barely over 60 miles and 9,000 feet of vert. If you isolate it to the event timing, 6 a.m. to 4 p.m., based on my pacing in the first two hours, it would be about 48 miles and 7,000 feet, for the latter 10 hours. It was a great experience and so inspiring to see how many people were out there getting at it. It was also great to meet some people in the surrounding neighborhoods that couldn't help but ask what I was doing after <laughs> seeing me run by their house all day. Thank you both for doing what you do. Anything over, I, like, I, I forget if there was another person that got over 60 miles. I don't think so, but 60.41 miles just on a typical Saturday is stout. So congratulations, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, Big spring energy gift certificate coming to you to help fuel you on your next big effort, which I'm going to guess is probably this weekend. Like knowing this guy, he's probably got some stuff up his sleeve. I also really like like what he said in there. It was a great experience and so inspiring to see how many people were out there um, getting at it, which is really cool because 
I don't know. I always I look at people like Andrew who's going out and doing massive big miles. I'm like, that's so inspiring. Like I want to do that. Yeah. Um, but to hear that Andrew is also reflecting on everyone else that is doing this thing together is mm -hmm. really, really cool. And that's kind of yeah. that's kind of the theme of the weekend is Kim and I again didn't really know how much participation we would get because it's, you know, hey, the race isn't happening. Go do your own thing and let's see what 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 comes up of it. And we were just overwhelmed by the response from runners, just taking it on themselves to go do something challenging or fun. And obviously vert was the name of the game. But then also you got to realize like running 60 plus miles on on a typical Saturday around your neighborhood streets is just it's bonkers. Doing 100 hill repeats just here on our blocks was nerve wracking. And that was only two hours. Yeah. And I can't imagine being out there all day kind of doing the same thing over and over again. So that's a testament to the mental strength, the physical strength. Tiger Claw would have been a piece a of cake, warm up, a warm up. <laughs> Walk in the park. Walk in the park. Um, um, congrats, Andrew. Congrats, Andrew. Uh, email info at runtigerclaw.com. Nailed it. This next winner also wins a $50 gift certificate to Spring Energy to help fuel their adventures because they got up to some serious vert. How'd you feel about your hill repeats after you saw this? Oh, like in my mind, I'm going, Oh, my hill repeats are stout, stout, super stout. stout. And then I saw this guy, and I was like, oh man, oh man. All right, so our next winner is Z I'm going to get the last name wrong, but Zach De Chichis, the the check the Chechis. I would say De Chechis, De Chichis. De Chichis. De Ch De We're probably both very wrong. Yeah, We're probably like, mispronouncing Zach. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's Zach De Chichis. So regardless, Zach, sorry about We're putting so your last sorry. name, um, but. You are a winner, which is great. So this guy got over 9,000 feet of vert. Quarantine hill repeats. I decided to do some sweet quarantine hill repeats. The hill behind me climbs 220-ish feet in about 0.3 miles. 42 hill repeats later, and I climbed over 9,000 feet of vert. What a sick day. Thanks for the challenge at Run Tiger Claw. <laughs> um, yeah. Holy cripes is uh, what we wrote there, and it is no joke. Holy cripes. 9,000 feet of vert on a 0.3-mile hill. I'm assuming it's 0.3 up and 0.3 down, so it's about 0.6 round trip. But regardless, 42 hill repeats. That's like 25 miles with 9,000 feet. So it's very, very close to Tiger Claw, if not a little bit more. Yeah. It's crazy. So congratulations. Zach. And also like his GPS thing was just like so thick. Yeah. Like <laughs> just, just from like one his I'm actually impressed. His watch tracked it pretty well. It looked at least like it did. It might have cut his miles short as far as distance because I ran into the same problem. My mileage yes. and my vert were off. But if you do the calculations via calculator, you're gonna get the same thing. Uh but it, yeah, just a big block of lines on a Strava. It's pretty uh pretty neat. Okie dokie, change the media out here. Get that media, girl. Got to change that media. <laughs> uh, next winner is actually kind of a group, so they're going to have to fight over the prizes. Luckily, should be a couple of items. Yeah, the two of them can figure it out. <laughs> uh, it's the Sufferfest prize. We're going to give away the other uh, Yeti cooler and Sufferfest swag. Uh, the winners, it's a group. So again, if they're friends or family, they're going to have to fight over it. Mia Brooks and Morgan Ritchie, and I believe there is a couple other individuals that participated in their Tiger King themed run. Let me kind of break it down for you. Uh, they shared a little bit of the story, but this idea came to us while on a boring stretch of my run. Tiger King is so popular right now. We had to do a tie in. Heart Attack Hill was perfect for this since it's not close. To, it's not closed to the public and it's wide enough for social distancing. I threw out the idea to my other Tiger Claw buddies because not all the ideas that come to me while running are great ideas and they were in. So we did hill repeats for an hour and wrote in our rec uh, recorded elevation gain to see how close we were. Oh, I must have. Uh, 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 I must have not, not copied over the entire. Oh, there it is. Uh, so we did hill repeats for an hour and wrote in our record recorded elevation gain to see how close we were to hitting 8,500 feet, which is Tiger Claw. We were short a couple hundred feet, so I cranked out the rest on my own. Too fun. Thanks for putting on this contest and getting us out there. So as you can see, uh, not only I, I thought it was great, but they basically like gave themselves a nickname of each of the cast members from Tiger King, Joe Exotic, uh, Carol Baskin, Jeff Lowe, uh, and they recorded their own individual Burt 
vert and they <laughs> added it all together. Bert, to get what's the, a vert vert? Vert vert. But I just love the creativity. They created this thing that they could write on. They managed the social distancing. If the, they had some photos on their Instagram and stuff yeah. of the wider road. And they basically did repeats as a group as opposed to individual, which was really wonderful. I was super curious if somebody was going to do a uh, Tiger King theme. It was inevitable. I wasn't disappointed. It was inevitable. Um, so congrats, Mia, right? Mia Brooks? Yep, Mia and Morgan and the, the whole team. We don't yep. know everyone's names that participated, but to, to everyone that did, great job. Uh, the next winner will receive a $50 gift certificate to Rabbit Apparel. And our winner is Jeffrey Lodel or Ladal. Uh, he, ag again, went above and beyond. It was pretty awesome. He goes, I did a big loop from the house, hit a total of 15 trails for 18.5 miles. I did some wordsmithing with them last night and figured out that taking a letter from each trail spells out Tiger Claw. That does leave six extra trails, though. <laughs> so I figured out a word for those, too. It's farted. <laughs> Tiger Claw farted. Classy. This was slated to be my first ultra. Yeah, yeah, not quite a true ultra, but you get what I mean. Since we adopted my two-year-old son last Aww. August. Also, our first flight and out-of-state trip with him. He's accompanied me in the stroller on a few training runs and loves it. I also have six and eight-year-old daughters, and they crewed me on two ultras last year. It was absolutely fantastic seeing them and my wife after a long stretch of hard running. I was really looking forward to adding our new addition to my crew, and even though it didn't work out quite as planned, they put together a finish line, and he was there, covered in paint, by the way, uh, to greet me and cheer me on at the finish. Um, this was just one of those... One of those things, he has lots of photos and some videos and stuff, but it was one of those really touching stories from the weekend that I that honestly just didn't expect to sort of kind of get emotional reading it yeah. and, and, and seeing it. Uh, but a huge congratulations to Jeffrey because he did. He created a giant tiger claw finish line arch. Uh, he went out there, got the vert, got the miles, celebrated with his family. It's kind of everything that tiger claw is and encompasses. Yeah. And it's just wonderful. And if you check out uh, Jeff or Jeffrey's uh, Instagram, it's underscore run boy b-o-i and run boy, run boy. But with an and, underscore at the beginning yeah underscore uh he has some videos of like running through the custom finish arch with his kiddos and super cute super cute second to last winner we have two more uh this individual will win a 50 dollars gift certificate to seven hills running shop which can be used over the phone or online phil at seven hills uh, we'll take care of you. We'll provide you with the gift certificate. You just got to um, just give him a call. Let him know. You can apply it to anything. Another individual that created a really cool race arch, but also uh, just really nailed it. Um, and that is Ryan McCurvin. Ryan, this is his story. Was this the Tiger Claw challenge I had hoped for? Of course not. This day was supposed to include 8,000 feet of sheer ass-kicking vertical stretching over 25 miles across the mean, a.k.a. nasty trails of Tiger Mountain. Instead, I found myself on a very poor man substitute <laughs> on the mean, <laughs> a.k.a. average trails and streets of Renton. As a tribute to an epic day that was, alas, was not meant to be, thanks for nothing, COVID-19, I set out on a route planned to very roughly resemble and honor the original Tiger Claw. Three loops, yellow, pink, and white, with three distinct vertical ascents totaling 1,628 vertical feet and covering nearly 18 miles. While still covering a respectable distance, this route unfortunately failed to offer even 25% of the vertical challenge that I was supposed to be climbing on this day. Unfortunately, Tiger Mountain and all the other trails and peaks of consequence were all closed, so this was really the best I could come up with right in my own backyard. To make this run just a little more interesting, a Sufferfest FKT uh, was consumed at the aid station following the completion of each loop. Was this day even close to... <laughs> there we go. Uh, was this day even close to as extreme as the real Tiger Claw Challenge? Not even close. Was hashtag Tiger Claw Day more fun than double barrel full of monkeys? You better believe it. Am I looking forward to a triple roundhouse kicking Tiger Mountain in the teeth when the event is rescheduled? Hell yeah. Will the addition of murder hornets to the Pacific Northwest make this event even more interesting? Absolutely. freaking lutely Look out, Tiger Claw. I'm coming for you. Huge shout out to Ryan. He made the Tiger Claw Day arch there. He drank the Sufferfest FKT. Nice shout out to our sponsors. And crushed the vert and the mileage in his own backyard making the best of what he could. And also drinking Sufferfest. Yeah, I mean, like, like, legit. Pretty awesome. Way to go, Ryan. And I, I just love his writing, too. And I'm like, I forgot about the murder hornets. That's something we'll have to add to the race packet next year. <laughs> An end of a murder hornet? Just we'll, so we'll when they it. open their bag, it's like, oh! We'll just, we're going to change the name <laughs> of the race to Murder Hornet. There's something there. There's something there. We have to make another T-shirt. <laughs> something there. 
<laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, the next and final winner kind of went above and beyond. So not only did they do the vert, they did the miles, they made a video. And as someone who, you know, Ginger Runner, videos? as someone who makes <laughs> videos, I couldn't help but go, yeah, he just kind of put in that extra work. It was really yeah. neat to see. No one asked for this. Like, this was the other thing is we just left this really wide open for people to participate in any way they really wanted to. So uh, when someone made a video, I was like, oh, that's pretty damn awesome. Uh, so shout out to our final winner who also wins a $50 gift certificate to Seven Hills Running Shop, which can be used online or over the phone. All you got to do is call Phil at uh, Seven Hills and he'll just hook you up with whatever you want. We'll apply your $50 to that. Uh, Alex Hill. Alex Hill basically started Instagramming Tiger Claw Day before Tiger Claw Day. He'd been prepping for a while. And so it was a pretty neat thing. Um, he made an actual video of him running his 25.74 miles with 87, uh, 8,780 feet of happiness, suffering, and joy. <laughs> Those stats are almost identical to Tiger Claw mm -hmm. stats. Like we always kind of have yep. to rough estimate the mileage and the vert because sometimes Tiger For Mountain. New, new, new course. <laughs> the new course, yeah. Because Tiger Mountain sometimes eats GPS data and sometimes it doesn't deliver as much GPS data. It, it has and a sometimes really Sometimes it gives you hornets. Line. Yeah, sometimes it gives you murder hornets. Uh, but regardless, Alex sort of nailed the numbers and also made a video. I'm going to show you a little bit of the video now. I encourage you to go to his YouTube channel and check that out. I'll include a link to this video in the description of this show. Um, well, good morning. It is Saturday, May 2nd. And uh, today would have been the second annual Tiger Claw race up in Washington. Unfortunately, due to... COVID-19, it was postponed. But the celebration and spirit still lives on. So today is Tiger Claw Day. I am planning to do six up and overs of a local trail here in uh, Utah. It's called the Indian Trail. I basically should end up being pretty similar to the race route as far as mileage and elevation gain. So planning on around 25-ish miles with around 8,500 feet of vert. I'm excited. Let's do this. That's all I'll show for now. Uh, the video is great. Uh, it's really well edited and showcased. He has a little blockbuster button that he hit at the top and bottom of every loop. It was just, it was perfectly done, Alex. Congratulations to you. Uh, we were blown away by this weekend when we were presented with everything that's been going on and we knew that tiger cloud would have to be postponed uh it was it's been really difficult and i can only imagine what it's like for other race directors out there we we have two events a year that we host one is already a virtual global run and this is our first sort of in-person event and we always strive to make it the best so other race directors who have events throughout the year who rely on that yeah. as their sole source of income and, and and business. I can't imagine what they're going through. We see a lot of them pivoting and, and trying to do new things with virtual runs and stuff. We're seeing a lot of that happening and it is, it's, it's great. It's something that uh, if you can support them um, in any way you can, uh, we just are, we're so thankful that we have such an amazing community that is able to do what you did this weekend. Uh, which is not only challenge yourself and have fun in the process, but you gave us a real sense of community and hope and heart. Uh, and you guys helped us through this weekend. hundred percent. hundred percent. So thank you so much, everybody, for your participation. We hope the winners enjoy their prizes. Remember, if you are one of the eight that won one of the prizes, please just email info at runtigerclaw.com. Uh, we'll get you the prizes as soon as possible and get you in touch with the right people to, to make that happen. Everyone who participated in Tiger Claw Day, we appreciate you as well. Uh, we'll be in close contact with all of our runners uh, for the 2020 event, rescheduling or deferment whenever that um, is determined. But we are just, we're so thankful that we had this opportunity to, to do this last weekend. And I'm going to um, we'll show you one last video and then we'll talk a little bit about GRGR and we'll move into the after show. This last Because we video, do have some honorable mentions as well. Yes. Can we talk about that That's in the right. after show or we're going to do that here? I think we can do that. Um, do you want to do that right now? Sure. Let's do it.
Do you, do you want me to just tell what I have to Absolutely, say? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you pulled anything aside. Um, first off, I do see that Maria Dalza is in the mm. chat room. And I want to give a big shout out to our top three women from last year, uh, Claire, Maria, and Ladia, all three of which did cool things yeah. this weekend and helped us celebrate Tiger Claw Day. I also want to give a shout out to Mandy, uh, A2B2 in the chat room. Mandy did a lot of really cool things. I know some of you guys were like, Mandy, 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 like to try and like win a prize or whatever. Um, Mandy, we love what you did. Mandy actually took um, the tire claw track and put it into her treadmill and spent a lot of hours on her treadmill this weekend yes. after um, not completing Tiger Claw last year. Uh, Mandy, we really appreciate what you did. It made us very happy. Uh, Mandy, uh, for those of you guys who don't know, Mandy and her husband, Andrew, were set to be our... Upper aid station captains. Our aid station captains and part of the planning crew this year as well. So, so as <laughs> we debated as much as we wanted to give Mandy a prize because what she did is is a really heartwarming thing, and uh, also just like a really impressive feat for Mandy because I know Mandy effort. hasn't been running big big miles lately, so it was amazing. Uh, so, Mandy, you get our honorable mention. Uh, we still have a hoodie that we need to send you, so. That will continue to be the prize. But yeah. seriously, Mandy, we were we talked about it during um, Daily Brew while you were doing it because we do our daily life sh shows. And Mandy was in the midst of doing Tiger Claw on her treadmill while we yeah. were doing it. It was amazing. So Mandy totally deserved the shout out there. And in, in dovetailing in with your mention of the top three women from last year, first, second, and third place, uh, all three did huge stout efforts. Claire DeVoe, our winner from last year, mm -hmm. did she basically recreated Tiger Claw as well and did all the vert and all the mileage. So, uh, Claire, if you were watching this, bad ass. So, like, Claire would have come back and she just would have put up a huge fight out there. It would have been amazing <laughs> to see Claire take the take the win again. But she did it on her own terms. She, she created 8,500 feet of vert. She did loops. She did everything, mileage and all that. Uh, it was super cool to see. So, check out the Instagram highlights, too, because we added her stuff to the highlights. You can take, take a look at what she did. It was amazing. Yeah. The final thing that I want to show is a fun little video. Um, Darren Burris, who's in the chat room right now, and uh, Darren and Austin, who are also part of Team <laughs> oh, Tiger that's Claw. What you're showing. Yeah, why not? Right? Why not? I couldn't. I didn't know what you were showing. Yeah. No. It, yeah. Absolutely. Show this. Yeah. It's, it's relevant. It's <laughs> timely. Uh, it's adorable. Um, but if you're familiar with Animal Crossing, it's this fun Nintendo game, and Darren <laughs> took it upon himself to recreate the Tiger Claw course in this game. Um, it's it was fun because he invited me over to his island to run the course. So we both ran Let's Tiger be honest, Claw. It was Austin dressed up like Darren running the Tiger Claw course right. with you. But I just wanted the excuse to show the fact that uh, someone created Tiger Claw <laughs> in the game. You see the starting arch there. Aid station, lower aid yep. station. There's, There's green, loop green loop around the lake. I'm going to go up pink. This is me. I'm going up pink. Get to the upper aid station, down, down blue. blue. I'm going to go up white for the second one, then down blue. Oh, Meanwhile, uh, Austin doesn't know what's going on. I'm going around yellow. Oh, loop. you're almost lapping Austin. Yeah. <laughs> go up. There's a tower. I go down blue. I'm and done. I finish Tiger Claw. Yay. I win. I, did it. I win. And the lower A station there. And I celebrate. <laughs> Just a uh, quick little video. The details that were put in there, we appreciated it so much. And Darren's like laughing in there. But technically, Darren it was, was Austin like, running as Darren. Right. And yeah. Darren was, you know, pressing like, I don't do a lot of creative stuff, but this is like my one thing. And we were thoroughly impressed. Like it was color coded. There's the towers. There's the aid stations. There was a porta potty. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really, it was super cute. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, just again, a, a huge thank you to everybody uh, for participating. And, and we can't wait to see people on Tiger Mountain once everything is sorted. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, GR crew member of the week. Yes. Great. As always, we like to recognize members of the community who go above and beyond. This this whole show is about that. Uh, but we'd like to single out an individual for being our GR crew member of the week. Kim, who is this week's GR crew member of the week? Uh, this week's GR crew member of the week is Ryan Flint. I think Ryan is in the chat room right now. Uh, Ryan wrote in to say, long story short, I'm proud to say that this past Saturday, Tiger Claw Day, I got my first FKT on the 45-kilometer Kissing Bridge Trailway 
beating the previous time by over 28 minutes. Well I think done. Ryan, I think Ryan is in Ontario. I could be wrong, but I believe he's in Ontario. So congrats, Ryan. Damn, dude. FKT this weekend for Tiger Claw Day. Stout. <laughs> Stout. Uh, huge shout out to Ryan. Congratulations, my friend, uh, on being GR crew member of the week. That's going to wrap up episode number 306 of Ginger Runner Live. As I mentioned, a real brief mention of GRGR. So the Ginger Runner Global Run is our annual virtual run that we do every year. We are moving it up. It normally takes place in October, but this year it's going to take place in July. Uh, we are working uh, to make this year special. We are going to be giving back to small businesses and independent artists. Uh, the whole point of Ginger Runner Global Run has, bring, has, to, uh, has been to bring the global community together. In this case, we want to bring them together and give back. So not only are we going to be supporting a number of local businesses from Rabbit, Elevation Culture. These are businesses who are uniquely affected by all of this and could definitely use the, the business and the support. So we want to do more of that. Uh, so there'll be T-shirts and Elevation Culture medals. Uh, there'll be bibs from a local company called Rainbow Racing that does that sort of thing. And obviously, you hasn't been able to do any of that now that the races are all closed. Uh, we're also going to be including a very unique, special thing that uh, we're calling, at this point, the Artist Postcard Pack. This is going to support six different artists and photographers who are out of work currently because races have had to be canceled. Um, we're going to be working with Howie Stern, Matt Trappy. Um, Glenn Takayama, Ryan Thrower, uh, I, uh, Drawn to High Places. Drawn to High Places. Yep. We've talked about her, her name on is Nikki. Our show before. She's a fantastic local painter. <laughs> um, and Hillary, uh, another, Matheson, Matheson yeah. who, another local photographer who's been shooting a number of races as well. So all of these photographers and artists are going to be getting a percentage of the sales of each and every registration. Um, as an artist, it's the first thing that came to my mind is how can we directly benefit those who are immediately out of work. And this is the best way I know how. So we're going to be having postcards that they took these photographs and created this art. We'll include them in each and every registration pack. All amazing people, all people who have gone to, you know, from having a super busy work schedule to having like Nothing. zero. They so, all have unique stories. And yeah. we were reading through them uh, this week, kind of talking to them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. So uh, we're very excited to make GRGR this year not just about bringing people together, but about bringing people together and giving back. That's the point. That's the goal. And we're very, very excited about it. Registration is going to open this month. Uh, so just giving you guys all preparation now that w you will know as soon as registration opens. Trust me, we're going to try to shout this from the rooftops. Um, but we're going to open up registration and we're going to start shipping stuff probably in June for a July event. And it's going to be a, what we're planning is a week long event. We're very yep. excited. So stay tuned, everyone. More details to come. But we're going to move into our after show right now. We'll talk maybe a little bit more about GRGR in our after show and more Tiger Claw Day. If you'd like to join us for our after show, it's very easy to do. Just go to patreon.com slash ginger runner. That's it. And jump in at the $1 level or above. Am I forgetting anything? Uh, I think just one last thing. We were just talking about Patreon. We talked about doing our daily live streams. If you want in on the daily live streams, we're at number 30... 36 yesterday, 37 seven tomorrow. tomorrow. We've been doing it. We do it every day, Tuesday through Sunday. Um, and that's for the $3 and above levels. Yep. We'd love to see you there. The daily shows have been awesome, entertaining. They get weird sometimes. They do get weird sometimes. <laughs> so uh, we'd love to see you at the $3 level or above. Regardless, thanks everyone. Get out there, train hard as hard as you want. Uh, virtually race harder and party the hardest. We appreciate y'all. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. Ginger.